<laughs> Thank you. Four years ago, I left the United States of America. I left because I wanted to get out, out of the Midwest and out of the country. See, I'm from Wisconsin, like Greg said, and growing up, my brother and I, we didn't have cable TV and we weren't allowed to play video games, so our options were to play outside in blizzards or read a book. I chose books. And one of the first books that I remember reading was this thick book of Greek mythology. And my father, he'd given it to me when I was about seven. And I think his thought process went something like, mm, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. No, that's way too violent, definitely too scandalous. I'll have her read Greek mythology instead. <laughs> and that book, it made me curious. It made me want something different than the American dream. Something different than the job, the paycheck, the big house, the nice car. I wanted adventure. You know, exhilaration, new discoveries in far off lands. You know what I'm talking about. And <laughs> I'm sure maybe some of you have experienced that desire too. But I'm guessing that maybe some of you are hesitant to travel, especially abroad. And recently, I got curious about the numbers. Sure, I had the feeling that not too many Americans traveled, but was it really an issue? So I Googled it, and I found that according to the esteemed folks at the Census Bureau, last year, only about 38% of US citizens actually had international passports valid for travel, and we're talking farther than Canada and Mexico. And I wondered, why is that? See, friends who wanted to travel, they would ask me how I did it, and I would ask them what was holding them back. And the same two reasons always came up. Oh, I, I really want to see the world, they'd say, but I just don't have the time. Or, man, my bucket list is fantastic. I have so many things on it, but I just can't afford it. Do those reasons sound familiar to you? Because if they do, I wonder, if we take an honest look at ourselves, are time and money really the only things holding us back? See, I'm willing to bet that they're not. And today, I'm calling you all out. Maybe you're scared. Maybe you're afraid of the unknown. See, I think you might be because I was. I wasn't a traveler. I didn't have the traveler's mindset. And I'm here today to convince you that that traveler's mindset is the key to having adventures in your everyday life, to living a life on fire, and most importantly, to connecting to the people around you. So, when I was 14, my parents, they put me on a plane alone and they shipped me off to Munich, Germany. <laughs> I was more than nervous. I could barely sleep the night before the flight, much like last night before the speech, and uh, <laughs> I, I was physically shaking as I stepped onto that plane. See, I barely knew the relatives that I would spend a whole month with, and I had no idea what lay ahead. So I arrived in Munich, met my relatives, and I realized that thank you and Gesundheit could only get you so far in terms of communication. But we found ways around it, right? Mostly through smiling, through sharing food, through charades, you know, those classic ways that people of different cultures connect everywhere. And they made me feel accepted, and it was exciting. And then my travels took me to new places. So this one night, uh, in a town near Lake Garda in northern Italy, my cousins, their friends, and I, we were all biking down this mountain at night. Um, it was late. We were out alone as kids, right? So for me, at 14, to go out alone in Milwaukee at night without parents, completely unheard of. But we were going to get gelato, the best Italian ice cream. And I was on the back of my friend's bike, and at one moment, because she was biking, I just looked up, and I saw all the stars. And... In that moment, I just felt so connected to the world around me, to my friend, to those stars even. And I had this urge, so I just let go of her waist. I put my arms up, and we just coasted down that tiny Italian street with the stars and the breeze and the smell of the lake. And I realized, wow, this is freedom. And in that moment, I was the closest that I had ever been to experiencing the adventures and the excitement that I'd been reading about my whole childhood. I had become a traveler. And I realized that I could have those adventures too. They weren't just for the books. It was simply up to me to seek them out and make travel possible. So from that point on, I was hooked. 
I had this massive desire to create a life in Europe, and <laughs> what did I do? Well, I learned languages, German, French, and a little Italian. And right now, I know a lot of you guys are probably thinking, well, great, but I don't speak languages, and I really don't have the money to travel. Well, what's interesting is that back then, my languages weren't that good, and I didn't really have the money either, so I looked for opportunities. I applied for the Fulbright grant, and through it, I taught English in a town of 10,000 for a year in Germany. And then I worked a communications job in Frankfurt for two years, and during that time, I went all over couch surfing for free in dozens of European cities, but I didn't stop there. I went as far as New Zealand and Southeast Asia, and before I knew it, I had traveled to 25 countries. But I have to tell you the truth. See, somewhere along the way, I, I started feeling apprehensive about coming back to the US. See, I had this fear that coming home would mean coming back to a place of routine. See, to me, in my head, the US was a place where people were workaholics, where, where they only cared about their paychecks, and where conversation, quite frankly, only revolved around the latest episode of reality TV. And See, I was afraid that after three years and 25 countries and so many exhilarating memories and experiences that I would get back and all of the adventure would be lost. Maybe you know what I'm talking about. You know, we get back from a week vacation and all of a sudden we're back in a rut. We start complaining about the things that we've always complained about, whether that's our job or the government or the weather. And not only that, but we compare that idealized memory, the, the excitement of the vacation, the newness, the discovery, to our routine. And we feel even worse about our everyday lives. And so I started thinking, well, how, how can I find a way to stay in this frame of mind, this, this traveler's mindset? And stay with me on this one. So what if, instead of feeling disappointed or demotivated when we come back from a trip, what if we could feel even more energized and more excited to take on challenges and adventures right in our hometowns? And not only that, what if, instead of feeling lonely or misunderstood in our cities or towns, what if we could come back and have the tools to connect and engage with the people around us right where we are? So I thought back to my travels, back to when I felt scared or helpless. Like this one time I was in Bangkok, uh, Thailand, alone at night, and I was taking a taxi cab to my guest house. And the driver, well, he pulled into this alleyway, got out of the car, and started talking to the only people on the streets at the time, men, while I waited nervously in inside. I was thinking I'd be kidnapped or something. And in that moment, I asked myself, where are my boundaries, and how can I be more open? See, what was it about the assumptions in my mind that I had constructed, the borders for another person, that made me assume he didn't have my best interests at heart? Where did my suspicion come from? Sure, common sense, caution, great things when you're traveling, but where did my fear come from? It turns out he was just asking those men for directions. I thought back to my travels, back to when I felt stupid, because it happens a lot. <laughs> and <laughs> this one time I got in a metro out to the wrong direction, miles out of Paris into these suburbs. I had no idea where I was. I was really feeling frustrated and stupid. I was wasting time, right? And at that moment, I just asked myself, OK, how can I be courageous? And instead of just sitting there and feeling dumb, I turned to the man next to me and asked him about ways to get back into the city. And that one question, it turned into a whole conversation peppered with curiosity about Milwaukee, my hometown, and Cameroon, where he was born. And instead of feeling frustrated that I had wasted time by going the wrong way, I stepped out of that train with a smile on my face, new knowledge in my head, and gratitude for that real human connection. See, at home, we start thinking that there's some sort of rule. And it's a rule that I think, quite frankly, keeps us separate from the people around us. It's not the traveler's mindset. See, we start thinking, well, this is my friend group, or mm, no, this is how I see the world, or well, this is just how I've always done it. And today, I invite you to shake up your routine. See, there's a stranger sitting near you right now, 
Or if you're watching this at home, there's, there's someone within 100 feet of you who you don't know, and that's a person with a whole slew of life experiences and talents and skills that you can learn from and grow from, and they can learn and grow from you too. All you have to do is start the conversation. And if that sounds scary, it's okay. I, you still have a couple seconds to prepare before I ask you to do that, so. <laughs> now, I'm not that kid anymore who, who felt confined to the adventures of a Greek mythology book. No, now I'm a world traveler with, with a passport of my own, and honestly, the best part, I'm never bored, because I know that the next interesting person is just a conversation away. And you and I, we're not confined to the buzz that we get from a movie theater screen, or a video game, or amusement parks. No. See, happiness, connection, adventure, it's all right where we are. See, we can seek out opportunities to be more open, to be more curious, and to have the courage to shatter the boundaries that separate us from people around us right in our hometowns. So here's your challenge. Today, after my talk is over, the next stranger who crosses your path, ask them the first meaningful question that comes to mind. It could be as simple as, hey, I'm curious, if you didn't have to worry about time or money, what would you do? Does that sound scary? Or maybe you feel a little stupid doing that? It's okay. You can choose openness, choose curiosity, choose a more borderless mindset, choose the traveler's mindset. Thank you. <laughs>